come back, sit it directly in him. Okay, just walk around, take picture, and sit it right in front of him. Okay. 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 Circumstances that we are currently faced with, we had an opportunity to complete the month of Ramadan, and that within itself is a blessing from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Without belaboring this khutbah be beyond what is necessary, just two pieces of advice before we continue with our day. A man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, "Ya Rasulullah, kullu fil Islam kaulin ma asalu ghayra ghayra." He said, "O oh, Messenger of Allah, say to me something." Allah says, indeed, those who say, Allah is my Lord, and then afterwards they are upright on that. Upright. The angels descend upon them, saying to them, لا تخافوا, don't fear, ولا تحزنوا, and don't grieve, وأبشروا, and receive glad tidings of the paradise that you have been promised. نحن أولياءكم في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة. We are your guardians, we are your protectors in this life and in the hereafter. This is all the yield, all the harvest of saying that you believe in Allah and then afterwards being upright. When you say you believe in Allah and you are upright on that, there is no curving, there is no swerving. لا يلو كذا وكذا يمين ويسار سلك الجادة. You take the path straight to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. كل هذه السبيل أدعو إلى 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 الله على بصيرة. أنا ومن تبعني. That this is my path. Say this is my path that is straight. هذا الصراط ربي مستقيما. فاتبعوا. This is the path of your Lord. Straight. Follow it. Don't swerve to the right or to the left due to circumstances and situations. Be steadfast in your belief in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and the angels got you. Angels have you. They said, "Don't fear, don't grieve. Receive glad tidings of the paradise that you have been promised." Nahnu awliyaukum. We are your guardians and your protectors in this life and in the hereafter. In this life and in the hereafter. Kul amantu billah thum mustaqim. Say you believe in Allah, and then afterwards be upright. Say you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then let your actions show that you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This world that we live in right now, the Masil Hajjah, it is in dire need of firm belief in God. 
COVID-19 has shown, even with us within our own ranks as Muslims, how unsure we are of the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has shown us the weakness of some of our faith. It has shown us the lack of trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has shown us a lot of weaknesses within ourselves. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He strengthen our weakness. Yuqawwi al-da'fana. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen our weakness. Say you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then be upright. الحمد لله الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك لا إقرار به وتوحيدا وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله سراج منيرا The second part of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم's advice ثم استقم and then afterwards be upright The scholars they explain that that there's no righteous deed except that shaitan has two ways to make you deviate from that righteous deed somebody has to hold it it's not going to stay you have to turn the camera facing me the camera's facing that way that's fine we'll get it right the second part of the dua, the, of the piece of advice, the Prophet ﷺ said, Thum mistakim, and then afterwards be upright. The scholars say that shaitan, there's no righteous deed except that shaitan has two ways to make you deviate from that righteous deed. Imma ifrat wa imma tafrit. Either you go too far to the right and you become extreme in that act, or you go too far to the left and you become negligent about that act. Shaitan doesn't care one way or the other whether you go too far to the right or too far to the left just as long as you don't hit your target. Understand your enemy. Know your enemy, know yourself, and you never have to worry about the result of a thousand battles. You'll win every time. Don't know your enemy and don't know yourself and you will succumb every single time. You will lose every single battle. Shaitan doesn't care whether you go too far to the right too far to the left you go to the extreme in the act and you go beyond the boundaries that islam has set or you don't even meet the mark you're negligent in the act be steadfast be upright the scholars explain that part of being upright is that you, you always tread the middle course our religion is a religion of moderation in everything in eating in drinking and everything that we do is moderation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who are moderate in everything that they do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Allah la yuhibbul muslimin, that Allah does not like those who are excessive. Those who go to the extreme, they are excessive in what they do. But we follow a middle course because in following the middle course, it allows us to stay the course. When you try to go to the extreme, you try to go overboard, you end up burning yourself out. As the three men came to the house of the Prophet وسلم, and they asked Aisha عنها, what was the behavior, the worship of the Prophet وسلم, in his home. And Aisha said that he was very moderate. Some nights he would get up and pray and other nights he wouldn't. Some, night, some days he would fast until we would say he's never going to break his fast. And some days he would not fast until we would say he will never fast again. That was the moderation of the Prophet Sallallahu What we tend to see when we read hadith or when we hear imams and preachers and speakers talk, we tend to see just a glimpse. We tend to see just one side. We never really fully get the full picture. And the full picture of the Prophet Sallallahu worship was al-i'tidal, al wasatiyah Just making sure that you stay in the middle, tread the middle course, middle course of moderation. One of the three men said, I will never get married. I'll spend my whole life single dedicating my life to Allah. The other one said, I'll stay up all night and pray and never go to sleep. The other one said that I will fast every single day and never break my fast. You see the extremism. Because they think that doing more is better. More is not necessarily better. Less but being consistent in the small that you do is better than doing a lot and then stopping. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam turned to Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As one day, young, one of the youngings of the Sahaba. 
And he said, Ya Abdullah, in me, wallahi, uhibbuka fillah. He said, I swear to God, I swear by Allah, I love you for the sake of Allah. Lakin la takun mithru fulan, kana yakumu layatumma tarakaha. He said, but don't be like so and so. He used to get up at night and pray, and then he stopped. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves consistency, brothers and sisters. Consistency. Man kana ya'budur Ramadan, fa inna Ramadan karintaha. Wa man kana ya'budullah, fa inna Allah hayyun la yamut. That whoever worshipped Ramadan, Ramadan is over. Whoever worshipped Ramadan, Ramadan is over. But whoever worships Allah, Allah is ever living. He never dies. Our mission doesn't stop because Ramadan is over. Recitation of the Quran doesn't stop because Ramadan is over. Fasting doesn't stop because Ramadan is over. Salat doesn't stop because Ramadan is over. Staying away from the haram is not, is not just in Ramadan. But the Prophet ﷺ, he said, That the most beloved deeds to Allah are those that are done with continuity, consistently, even if they're small. Find you a companion in Ramadan. Many of us found a companion in Ramadan, something that we found easy to do, something that we found our hearts open to in Ramadan. Take that companion with you outside of Ramadan. Take it with you. If you found it easy to give sadaqah in Ramadan, take it with you after Ramadan. If you found dua, you found your heart present in your dua, then take it with you after Ramadan. Whatever deed you found easy for you to do, then continue doing it. Allah loves consistency. Not that we're going to just clear our schedule just for Ramadan, and then when Ramadan is over, it's back to business as usual. La wallahi. One of them said that I'm going to fast. I'm never going to break my fast. I'll never get married and I will pray all night and never sleep. They left. When the Prophet Sallallahu came home, Aisha informed him of what the men said. These were young men, ambitious, but ignorant. Ambitious, but ignorant. And those two are two dangerous qualities to be combined in an individual. That you're ambitious, but you lack knowledge. You lack wisdom. You lack understanding. Very dangerous. The Prophet ﷺ went out into the community to go find these three. Because God forbid that that mentality, that philosophy spreads in the community. Gotta stop it. The Prophet went asking around, where are these three men? And he found them in the marketplace. And he said to them, Ta'alo, come here. He said, are you the three that just came from my house saying that you're going to fast all day, never break your fast, you're going to pray all night, never, break, never stop praying, and you're never going to get married? He said, Wallahi. He said, I swear by Allah, inni asumu wa ufti. I fast, but then there's days that I break my fast. Wa usalli wa anam. And I pray part of the night and sometimes I sleep. Wa atazawwaju nisa. And I marry women. Faman raghiba an sunnati falaysa minni. Whoever turns away from my sunnah, he is not of my ummah. Turns away from my sunnah, you are not from my ummah. Whoever turns away from my sunnah, you are not from my ummah. The Prophet Sallallahu is trying to redirect them. They're ambitious, but they lack knowledge, lack wisdom. Because if they had wisdom, they would understand by continuously doing that, how long is that going to last before you burn yourself out? Consistency, brothers and sisters. قُلْ أَمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ Say you believe in Allah, and then afterwards be upright. Part of being upright is taking the middle course, being moderate in your ibadah, moderate in your worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that you can continue worshiping Allah hatta yatiyaka al yaqeen until certainty comes to you, meaning until death comes to you. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alham. The last piece of advice that I would give, especially to the men of our ummah, because during this COVID-19 situation, we have seen the men of these households step up to the plate. We are constantly taking our families to the masjid and we have very little time to be leaders in our homes. Because the Imam is the leader, so we come to the masjid and listen to the khutbah. We come to the masjid and we pray the salat and jama'ah. So we're constantly passing on, extending our leadership from the home to the masjid. But since COVID-19, we have been in our homes Men have had to step up to the plate and be the imams in their homes. And I would like to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to place barakah in our homes, to place barakah in our men, in our men. Men, we are the, we, we are the one, the forerunners of this ummah. 
That is to take nothing away from our women because we wouldn't be who we are without our women. Many of us, our wives got up and made suhoor for us every single night. And that gave us the ability to go make wudu and lead our families in salah. You see how that works together? That works together. She got up and she cooked a meal, suhoor, got up three in the morning, even though she was the last person to go to bed. And she cooked a meal for her family so that her husband can get up and lead the family in salah, lead the family in morning reminders and all of the readings that we did during the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala place barakah in the men of our ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala place barakah in the men of our ummah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, khayarukum, khayar, uh, khayrukum, khayrukum li ahli, wa ana khayrukum li ahli. The best of you men are those of you men who are best to their families. He didn't say the best of the men are those who can fight real good. He didn't say the best of the men are the men who are the bravest, the toughest. He didn't say the best of the men are the men who can fight the best. He said the best of the men, ja'al al khayriya fi khidmat al that he made the good of the men contingent on how well you treat your family. He could have made good, the, the men being good, based upon any other criteria. But he made it based upon how well you treat your family. The best of you men are those of you who are best to your families. And I am better than all of you men to my family. That's a challenge from the Prophet Wasallam. I am better than all of you men as it relates to my families. And he had nine at one time. Some of us struggle with one. <laughs> I'm the best of you, all of you, to my wives. Meaning, he sets the bar. He sets the bar on how well we determine how well we treat our families. Brothers and sisters, brothers in particular, exercise mercy. Lower your wing of humility. Lower your wing of mercy. Be merciful, be compassionate with those of, in our homes. Until this COVID-19 situation just disappears, and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah keep us safe, keep us cured, and keep us healthy during this time. But until this situation subsides, many of our children, they don't really have an outlet. They're at home, and sometimes it's triggering us as men. We've never spent this amount of time at home. So sometimes we find ourselves triggered. Sometimes we find ourselves bothered. Be merciful. Be compassionate. Exercise mercy and compassion to your families. Exercise mercy and compassion to your families, brothers and sisters. The best of you men are those who are best to their families. And I am best. I'm the best of all of you men to my families. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he accepts from us our siyam. Allahumma taqabbal minna siyamana wa qiyamana wa ruku'ana wa sujoodana wa dua'ana ya dhal jalali wal ikram. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar. Allahumma taqabbal minna innaka anta al-samiyu al-alim wa tuba alayna innaka anta al-tawab al-rahim. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-jannatu fi ridaus al-a'la wa na'udhu bika min al-nar. اللهم إنا نسألك جنة فردوس الأعلى ونعوذ بك من النار اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمرنا وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي فيها معادنا وجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير وجعل الموت الراحة لنا من كل شر برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وآخر دعوانا عن الحمد لله رب العالمين الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته
I'm, I'm out of, I'm out of breath. Right now. Oh.